In today's video, we are going to talk about four foods that you can store practically forever. Put them in your pantry, tuck them away someplace, and they'll still be good no matter when you need them. Hey, Provident Preppers, I'm Jonathan. And I'm Kyleen. And today we are going to talk about forever foods. Well, almost forever foods. Almost, yeah. So the four foods that we're gonna talk about today are foods that you can just tuck away someplace and no matter when you need them, they'll still be good. The quality of it will depend on storage conditions. You need it cool, dry, dark, and the container that you store the food in will make all the difference in the world. So we'll explain a little bit of that, but we'd encourage you to go and stock up on each of these four foods and tuck a little extra away because each of them are a little bit challenging or if not impossible to produce on your own property, but they would be very valuable for you as well as a good barter item when things are tough. And part of the reason we wanted to do this video is because we're looking out on the internet and there is all kinds of bad information. But these four, we've got evidence to back it up. This probably doesn't come as a surprise to you, but salt is our number one food that won't go bad, like never. Right, and we went to the source. We went to Morton, who produces massive amounts of salt. And they says, well, salt itself has no expiration date. Salt products that contain iodine or seasonings. Yeah, they may have like a, a, sh a shortened recommended use life, but the salt itself, never goes bad yeah so like with the seasoned salt uh, we love this we use a lot of it we do store it but it doesn't have a forever shelf life because it has other ingredients and you, whatever your product is it's only going to be um, shelf stable as long as the shortest life ingredient this contains spices which have a significantly shorter shelf life than the salt so because it's mixed this isn't going to store as long the other thing um, that limits a shelf life could be things like the anti-caking ingredients. And, and this says contains some of these salts, table salt, sea salt, kosher salt, contain anti-caking additives. However, clumping may occur as this ingredient can lose its effectiveness. Doesn't make it harmful. Yeah. It just means that that particular ingredient isn't as effective, but the salt's still good. Now there's the other one like the pink Himalayan salt that I love. They only give it, what, a three year yes, shelf life? Yes, right but that's because it's going to start to clump if it starts to clump shake it out right you can you can get rid of those clumps so that's what limits the shelf life now the containers matter i had a whole case of iodized table salt that i thought would be a good idea to store many years ago that um absorb moisture because salt is hygroscopic and it was like soaked. The salt was crazy when I opened up that case. And in fact, if you click the card in the corner, I'll take you to a video where we showed you all about salt and what happened with this little um, episode, but we learned from it. So yeah. now the salts are always stored. We can put the original container in Mylar. You can stick it in Mylar all by itself too out of the container, but don't use an oxygen absorber because that will make it go hard. For things that I know I'm going to use more quickly and I'm not actually putting them in long-term storage, I'll just put them in a Ziploc bag to help protect from that moisture. environment. The moisture, the moisture. Right. Your ideal way to store salt would actually be in glass with a metal lid. There's a plastic lid on this one, but this protects it perfectly from the environment. And so that's a good way. Um, and salt, like even on your table, it's gonna stay good forever. One of our very favorite ways to store salt though, this is what I do for more longer term is I have a bucket with a gamma seal lid and I will put the containers in here. This salt is super cheap to buy, but the reason why I bought it, even though I don't use this very often, is because if we had a bad situation, it would be really easy for me to share one of these salt shakers with one of our friends or our neighbors or something. But in here, I've got just all kinds of different salt in the original container. That means that when I go to use it, it's so convenient. I could fill this whole bucket with salt um, and it would last a really long time. But every time I open it, I'm risking contaminating that salt. I don't have to worry about contaminating any of this and it's really so convenient. So that was number one. 
Number two is commercial sugars and syrups. And we got this information from Utah State University Extension. They are a very reliable source. And they talk about commercial sugars, granulated syrup and honey have indefinite shelf life due to their resistance to microbial growth. That pretty much means that the little critters can't live in it because it's so sweet. Um, so Maybe what we... I should try and be sweet so that nothing bad could live in me. I don't know what to do with him. He is so full of dad jokes. So when we store our sugars, um, sometimes the granulated sugar will get clumpy. It'll get hard. That doesn't mean it's gone bad. You can just, you know, smash out the cl those clumps, put it in a blender. There's a whole bunch of different ways to make it soft again, but you can do that. Um, and then the syrups may crystallize. That doesn't mean that they've gone bad. It just means that if you warm them a little bit, the crystals will all disappear and it's still good and safe. Um, some things like the honey will change in flavor and color over time. Again, that doesn't mean that it's gone bad. Now, storage containers are super huge. Let's start with honey first. Now, we have um, some of our kids texted us one day with these pictures. They had honey that had been stored in a square metal can. And they decided, well, it's pretty old, it's time to use it. And when they were dumping it out, it had a whole bunch of little black flecks in it. And those black flecks turned out to be part of the can. So the can was decomposing faster than the honey, but the honey was ruined because of that. So be careful of your storage container. Glass is ideal. Um, the honey in here is gonna far outlast this plastic container but glass um, is a really good way. A lot of times I prefer to do a metal lid on here. And this is the one sugar that you can produce on your own property fairly easily, but you still have to space and keeping bees, it's a wonderful thing, but it, it's not possible for everybody. Now, when we move into the other syrups, straight maple syrup, great. If you can do it in a glass jug versus the plastic, it's gonna store longer. We're fine with the plastic because we rotate through our supply. Um, now let's talk a little bit about corn syrup. So this was really interesting to me. You wanna make sure that the container is okay. Do you see, I'm not sure if you can see, see how this is dripping all over the place? This is only maybe four or five months old. I bought it when Sam was doing the caramel video. So if you go back and look at the caramel video, you'll know how old it is. But when, you, when we bought it, it only had this outside seal. It wasn't sealed like this. This is going to be safe and protected because of that. Now, storage containers matter. I'd make sure that it had the, the lid on it if you're going for long term. And then sugar. Sugar, um, it's hygroscopic like the salt is. And so you want to make sure that it's in something that protects it from moisture. Do not use an oxygen absorber because it will turn your sugar hard. Um, but sugar can even easily be stored in, this is just a repurposed glass container. Um, this sugar will be good, practical, well, forever in a what we do is this is a sugar bucket that's in our pantry when our kids were little. They had to go in and sit on the sugar bucket until they sweetened up. Anyway, um, Mylar works great for that. You just wanna make sure that you are protecting these and storing them correctly, and they will last forever. Number three is cornstarch. We went to Argo and it says it is good to use for prepared recipes for an indefinite period of time. Cornstarch may be stored indefinitely if it's kept dry. The number 10 can is the ideal way to store it long-term because it creates this nice little time capsule. It is also one of the more expensive ways to store it. So if you wrote, want to rotate through it, because we use a lot of cornstarch, um, I would recommend doing something different. One of the things that we do is I buy it um, from usually Winco because they sell a lot of things in bulk, but I will buy a giant bag of it and then I put it in here because Literally, that can be in my pantry for years and I just keep using it. So that's how I usually do it, which is why this container, remember cornstarch, you got to keep it dry, right? But this has been in since 8 of 2001 in my storage room. And so we just wanted to open it and I just want to show you that even though this was in there like that, it is just a little tiny bit clumpy. It's such a fine powder but it's like perfectly fine. So that's over 20 years. This is a good way to store it, just buying it in these little canisters. But the, the best way to buy the cheaper ones is actually to buy one that's like the Argo brand because it comes in a plastic container. And because we wanna keep it dry, 
that's one of the better containers to keep it dry, but you could store it in glass bottles and used um, peat bottles. In fact, I'll leave a link um, in the corner just to a video that we created on how to store food in repurposed plastic containers. So cornstarch, that was number three. Number four is vinegar. And we got our information from the Vinegar Institute. I didn't know there was a Vinegar Institute, but <laughs> there is. So there's an institute for everything. They say because of its acid nature, vinegar is self-preserving and does not need refrigeration. Distilled vinegar will remain virtually unchanged for an extended period of time. And while some changes can be observed in other types of vinegars, such as color changes or the development of a haze or sediment, this is only an aesthetic change. We actually store a variety of different vinegars. Um, this is the apple cider vinegar that I actually use all the time. And so we store that. It's in a glass bottle, which really helps to extend the shelf life over plastic. So when you look at, compare these two, the container is going to limit the shelf life of the, of the vinegar. This one's in glass, but this one's a pretty bottle, but it's in plastic. So if I'm going for the 50 years, I might want to just store it in glass. But um, if I'm good with 25 or 30, the plastic might be okay too. So vinegar is a wonderful thing to have on hand because it can enhance the different flavors of your food and, and um, it has medicinal properties. And we actually use vinegar, this kind of vinegar for cleaning all the time. Yeah. There you have it. There are the four foods that we wanted to emphasize today that have basically a forever life. And that's important if you don't want to rotate. We always, always, always yeah. encourage you to rotate your food so that you have the highest quality and the highest nutrition. Okay, but there's not much nutrition in white sugar. So, you know, don't feel bad about storing but it and not a, rotating it. It's a great preservative and the sugar bucket's important for child management. I, it so. is, it is very important for child management. We'd encourage you to stock up on these basic four this week. Take some time, look and see what's available and stock up. You don't have to always do it in a number 10 can, right? But um, there's a lot of things that you can buy just as they are and store them away and they'll last forever. Now for the question of the day, what basic staple would you not want to be without? Tell us. And thanks for being part of the solution.